Hello and welcome to Chemistry 8. So um, this is obviously going to be a recap episode covering all the information that I've done in Chemistry 5 to 7. Um, so I began uh, episode 5 uh, talking about isotopes. Uh, you recall of course this um, same uh, proton, electron, uh, atomic number but different uh, numbers of neutrons uh, there. Um, so obviously you're going to get a, a different mass number as I spoke about much earlier on in uh, pretty in some time one to three. I'm sure you can check that out um, from four. Um, anyway, so isotopes, yeah, the chemical properties are the same for different isotopes um, because their electron configuration is the same. So if you're, uh, so yeah, the different neutrons are not going to affect uh, the electron configuration because it doesn't matter really. Um, okay, so electrons move around somewhat randomly, loosely in empty space. And I've mentioned this several times before. Most of... Uh, you know, most of everything is empty space, um, however you look at it. Um, uh, yeah, it might not be hold to be true, but at the moment that's how it seems with, um, you know, going down to um, uh, Pico or Angstrom or whatever scale we're at at the moment. But anyway, so yeah, so I was going to mention here. So yeah, so the next thing I wanted to talk about, and, and, and to be honest, it's mainly the whole thing that I'm going to be talking about here is... Um, we're talking about ionization energies. Um, and yeah, this is where all the graphs start coming in. Um, so yeah. Um, um, uh, so yeah, so so basically they're reactions. Um, and when we speak of ionization energies, we're talking about bands of energy. Um, in uh, semiconductor physics, for example, they talk about the band gap. So we're talking about bands of energy. It's a very um, kind of... Uh, an important concept um, across um, um, yeah across across all, all sciences really so yeah so then um, I spoke about the quantum number now the quantum number is a number that refers to the shell number um, I've also previously mentioned that the shell um, the shell we've got two in the first shell and then we move and we start from remember we start from the nucleus we've got two in the first shell right near the nucleus and we've got the eight on the shell just to the side on the outside and then 18 on the uh, third shell out, which is, I thought it was eight, but I think it might be 18. But maybe it's something to do with the orbitals. But we're not onto that yet, and we won't be for the rest of this. So, yeah, uh, next time on that. All right. So, yeah. Um, so, quantum, right, refers to one packet. Um, obviously, quantum is quite, you know, it's word used uh, all over science as well. So, but in this context, um, it refers to one packet, and a quanta um, is many packets. Um, yeah, uh, so that's, that's, um, yeah, so shell numbers are the principal quantum numbers. The uh, energy levels are called quantized. Uh, you often hear about quantization, for instance. That's what it's talking about. Quantized in, in the, uh, um, I think within sort of parameters. Anyway, I actually did this, uh, in a quality. So the atom, so the atom is stable. So the atom of, of whichever element we're talking about is stable with full shells. Um, in the space between for integers in the range of, uh, between two, um, basically three to nine. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know why I put it like that, really, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, with three to nine, everything's going to fall into the nucleus. Um, and this is, this is a thing I mentioned, mentioned a bit later on about shielding, which is to do with inner shells having a negative, negative repulsion. So we've got all these electrons, even though they're in shells, one's in the inner shell, is going to repel one in the outer shell, and then that, that outer shell going to, it's going to go out, and it's going to be much easier to get, to get it out of there. Um, but don't, yeah, I haven't spoken about that yet. Anyway, um, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do things slightly differently here. Um, uh, what that means, basically, is that I'm actually going to have a table. Um, and yeah, I've got to be a little bit careful with because I'm not sure exactly. So there may be, there may be some small gaps in the audio, um, but I don't, I don't want to do that. But um, there's just there is I'm going to have to sort out this this issue that I've got with um with the, with when I stop record literally the last forty seconds it gets cut off, which is incredibly annoying. But I will I think there must there must be some um, some uh, problem I'm doing there. But um so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to I'm just going to just um, clarify this. Look at the elements um, with this table that I've got up. So yeah. Well, no problems there on that one from the looks of it. I just looked. It's funny, it doesn't happen all the time. It happens about 70% of the time. And sometimes, and I sometimes I think, is it to do with the um, the file length or what? Um, I just don't I just don't know, really. So here we go. Um, we've got a table here. It's going to be the first of two tables that I'm going to do. Um, so, yeah. And again, I've got an, an issue here, with, unfortunately, which is the issue um, 
Uh, I was trying to get these column widths the same. Um, if you've got a title, you have to make the whole column bigger. And there must be a way around that as well. Um, a lot of these things, um, you know, obviously I'm, start, I'm starting out with all, all these um, subjects in a kind of basic way. So obviously as, I, as, as it gets a bit more advanced and stuff, um, I'm, you know, I'm going to make sure to presentate. I've, I've really... I'm, I'm really focused on the presentation so yeah so that's, that's, if that's a concern the presentation is definitely going to get much much better um it's still going to be it's still going to be some some things though i will retain okay so yeah so we've got the um first 11 uh elements there the atomic number that's z of course um so um for z1 it's, it's got hydrogen z2 is helium then there's uh in the shell there two um lithium is a uh, three um, beryllium is four, um, boron is five, carbon is six, uh, nitrogen is seven, oxygen is eight, fluorine is nine, uh, neon is ten, and then we've got the break, um, sodium at eleven. As you can see, so for the first two, so we're starting at the nucleus here. For the first two atoms, we've got one is a uh, hydrogen, um, just one electron there for hydrogen. Uh, of course, we're not talking about the number of neutrons there, of which we've got. Um, was it protium, deuterium? Tritium, I think. Um, one, two, three, one, two, three, uh, respectively, the neutrons there. So, yeah. Um, and then you can see that from where we've got li the uh, lithium um, going down to um, a neon there, it's just simply we're just adding an extra electron into the shell. Um, okay, so yeah, as I just um, mentioned then, um, actually, no, I didn't just mention that. This is something that I mentioned in, again, I mentioned this in, in one to three. You can watch four for the recap of that. Um, which is, is the best way to do it, really, just to just to watch the um, multiples of four um, videos uh, because I, I go through the whole lot anyway. So yeah, uh, well, as has been previously stated, when the atom loses an electron, um, it becomes a positive ion. Okay, so it's been ionized. Um, I mentioned that um, they've got one silver ion, uh, one electron. We've got the ion, the positive ion, the negative electron. Boom, and and it's one atom. Um, so yeah, and also if you've got a positive ion, we subtract the integer of the charge from the atomic number. So yeah, so to get the electron count. So if it's you know if we've got say, um, so what was one of the examples that I did? Um, I did an example regarding, uh, um, for instance, I did potassium uh, forty nineteen with a positive charge. Um, so what you do there is you'd simply um, you take the uh, proton number there, which is a uh, 19 for potassium, and uh, yeah, just subtract one, um, which is the charge. The plus is obviously one plus two plus three plus etc. And then you get the, um, the 18 to get the electron count. Um, and similarly for the negative ion, we had the integer charge to acquire the electron count. So it's, it's, it's just like I said, I've covered this already. Okay, so the energy um, required to remove electrons, uh, and this is known. So energy is required to remove electrons. This is known as ionization energy. Okay, so this this is really what we've been talking about the whole time. So we're going to put this in a formal way, which we should. Um, the first ionization energy of an element is the amount of energy needed to remove one electron from each atom in a mole of atoms. I haven't spoken about moles too much. They are the basic building blocks for a block of um, atoms. Um, but I am going to have to do a little bit more work, as you'll see in a minute, um, just regarding the units. The units of all these things are very, very important. Um, it was a kilojoule moles to the minus one. I don't know why it is to the minus one. It's kind of, but I will find out. And to be honest, it, it could just be to, so it can be easily, more easily quantified, but, um, you know, it's nice to look at, but there's, there's often reasons for these things. Um, sometimes they're there and then, and most of the time they're worth checking out. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so it's the amount of energy needed to remove one electron from each atom, uh, from each atom in a mole of atoms of an electron in the gaseous state. Um, Okay, so we're dealing with gaseous state elements. So obviously, we've got solid, liquid, and uh, uh, the gaseous state. Okay, uh, but that's a different part of the word, gaseous. It's not like the gas state. Hmm. Anyway, the sequence of first, second, third, uh, etc. ionization energies, known as successive ionization energies, as you can probably imagine, uh, you know, successive, uh, uh, you know, like in any kind of list or sequence, iteration, or whatever. Okay. So the general symbol of the first ionization is delta H um, sub I1. Okay, so that's referring to uh, the change uh, in energy for the, um, the first ionization uh, reaction. Okay, so let's move down a little here. Okay, so yeah. So let's take calcium here. So calcium, we're going to put the, uh, we can put in the um, equations, we actually do sometimes put the, uh, 
we put the state of matter that we're dealing with. Um, there's different ways to do it, and I'm sure I'll be um, I'll obviously I'll be speaking about that dot and cross Lewis structure thing. Um, I, I you know I'm, I'm looked at all of it yet, but anyway. So calcium is gas, obviously. Um, uh, so yeah, so then it's going to go to this stage. Um, we're going to remove that electron. Uh, as we remove the electron, we're going to get this positive charge coming up. Um, so we're going to get this. We're going to get uh, uh, the uh, positive uh, calcium and the uh, and the obviously negative electron. And the uh, figure for that is five hundred uh, positive five hundred and ninety kilojoule kilojoules uh, mole to minus one. Okay. And if we look at the second electron that we remove um, um, from these uh, gaseous ions, uh, we can see that that doesn't look correct. I don't think that is. I think it's probably... It probably is like that. Yeah. That would not be good to do that incorrectly. All right. So, yeah. And now, let's hope this formatting doesn't mess up. Perfect. Okay. So, yeah. So, you can see that um, to get to from a... Uh, uh, to move the second there, uh, we're going to get from... In fact, it's probably still done that wrong because the first one should be just a one plus, shouldn't it? Yep. So I did do that incorrectly, unfortunately. Uh, there we... Yeah. There we go. Perfect. So to go from calcium with nothing to the uh, positive ion, um, we remove the electron get 590 kilojoules moles and uh, 1150 so you can see that the uh, second ionization energy is much larger than the first um electrons are going to continue to remove until only the nucleus of the atom is left okay so now we're at the point where we're going to actually i'm going to i've got another table here a uh, second of two um tables um and yeah uh okay so let's move on to that Hmm. Well, there seems to be a bit of cut off there. But anyway, um, I guess the cut happens. It's all right. So let's look at this table then. So we can see as we remove all the different electrons, we can see the um, ionization energies. Um, um, and what is a uh, general theme? Well, it's interesting. If we look at the one electrons removed column, you can see there's not much. There's not much. I mean, there's not much useful information there. It doesn't look like it anyway. Um, one thing we can do is we do a diagonal line from uh, sort of 1-1 one, one to 11-11. Eleven, eleven. We do a diagonal line right across the top of each column. Um, we can see that we're getting increasingly, so what? So that goes up by four times in the first case. Uh, doubles there, double, uh, about 1.5, um, about 1.5. Um, again, the multiply looks up to be about 1.5. Um, so yeah, it looks it starts to get a bit less here. So it gets a bit about one point two maybe. Um, but yeah, and so it seems to say about one point two for the rest. So yeah, I mean that's just an approximation. I'm not. I'm just very very briefly looking at these numbers. Um, we can also see that um, if we go through the rows now, um, the ionization energy increases. Um, we can also see that, for instance, if we look at oxygen, um, the difference between seven electrons being removed and eight electrons being removed is huge basically um there's no other way to put that um we're looking about you know we're still we're, we've been going from about 1600 to 17,000, and boom we just go about um four times uh yeah we just we just multiply by about um five times really um but four times uh you know additively i suppose um yeah see it's like you know 68 and yeah, close enough close enough um so yeah, there's also huge changes between five and six for carbon. Uh, a big change in beryllium between three and four. So you can see that it actually looks like this big change um, happens much earlier. Let's think about the um, quantum numbers now. Um, interestingly, once we get to lithium there on three, you can see it drops right down, and that possibly is because of the shielding effect. Because the shielding, these those two, um, the the inner shell. Is is saying to them, if it was only one electron, there, you know, get out. That's basically what it seems to be saying. Um, it's a very very low figure. That's in fact that's the 
And interestingly, the same thing happens at uh, um, sodium as well. So there's only so that one electron on the outer shell seems to be very easy to get rid of. Um, even when we're dealing with much more um, complicated uh, atomic structures. Um, is there anything else that I can notice? And there's obviously going to be stuff to do with more complicated things than I've spoken about here. So, um, but yeah, you know what? I think that is probably about all I can really notice. Um, there are some interesting changes. For instance, four electrons removed, uh, carbon, uh, carbon is much, much lower than beryllium there. Um, you wouldn't really expect, and they're all lower actually from then on. Um, with beryllium, um, ah, damn it. Unfortunately, I've done this table incorrectly as well. Yeah, that is that is not good. Um, not much I can do about it here, though. But obviously, the uh, fifth element there is boron, not beryllium. Uh, so yeah, and I hope I think I got. I'm pretty sure I got all the numbers right. But I should try to focus on getting uh, the words right as well. But yeah, so that's obviously boron there at five. Um, and maybe I think of some ways to. Uh... Okay, so let's now consider um, the next section. So yeah, so for any element, the successive ionization energy is going to increase uh, as each electron is removed from the atom. The remaining ion becomes more positively charged. I've mentioned this before. Um, so yes, yeah, so you move the electron, it becomes more more positively charged. Um, so yeah. Um, so moving the next electron away from the increased positive charge is going to become increasingly difficult. Um, so there's one or more particularly large rises within the set of ionization energies of each element, with the exception of hydrogen and helium. And I've, and I've just and I've just noted that um, when we looked at the um, the successive ionization energy table. Um, so there's, there's very there's these large rises, and I, and of course I've just tried to explain some of the reasons for that. Um, Let's look at um, let's look at the actual sort of factors here. Um, so the first factor is going to be the um, the influence the ionization energies. So the first factor is going to be the size of the positive nuclear charge. Uh, this charge is going to affect all the electrons in an atom because remember the the, um, the atom uh, the electrons in the atom move like a body like a block solid block like ants. Um, the increase in nuclear charge with atomic number will tend to cause an increase in ionization energies. And we noticed that when I went um, to sort of diagonal dusting from the uh, each. Uh, Top, uh, top record from each column. The top field from each column. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah. So record. I think record field and file are the same. Hmm. It depends in what context. But anyway, that's that's not really to do with this. Um. Okay. So. So yeah, so the increase in nuclear charge with atomic number will tend to cause increase in ionization energy. We have it stated. Okay, now we've got the inverse square law, very very um, famous law in all of science. Uh, distance of the electron from the nucleus found is f is the force of attraction between two objects d is the distance between them. Then f is proportional to one over d squared. So really, that's a, it's actually a very very intuitive law, the uh, uh, inverse square law. Um, which is obviously the force of attraction decrease as the distance between the attached bodies increases. Okay, so this is um, more clearly stated here. Um, yeah, the attraction between the nucleus and the electrons decrease as the quantum numbers of the shell increase. So basically, this this attraction between um, the nucleus and these electrons. If you've got an electron way out in in shell, you know, uh, you know, a high number shell, it's not going to be as near, is it? Um, so the force of attraction uh, decrease because the distance between uh, these um, these uh, linked uh, bodies. I'm not sure they're rigid bodies. No, you have to do a free body diagram. But anyway, I'm doing yeah. Um, uh, okay, <laughs> all right, enough of that. All right, so um, so yeah, the attraction between the nucleus and the electrons decreases as the quantum number of the shells increase. All right, so, um, yeah, and obviously it says the same thing, really. The further shell is from the nucleus, lower the ionization energies for electrons in that shell. And there does seem to be a spike also at the beginning of the, uh, you know, if you've only got one electron, it's it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't you know, we noticed in, in, in 3 and 11 that, didn't we? So, which is obviously uh, lithium and sodium. Okay, um, so the further, yeah. 
So the shielding effect by electrons in field in the inner shells. Uh, and this is this is this is what I mentioned way um, sort of top of this uh, episode. Uh, all electrons negative charge repel each other. The electrons in the field in the shells repel electrons in the outer shell and reduce the effect of the positive nuclear charge. Okay, so they're reducing that. They're reducing that effect when it's. Um, although of course it's been gained by removing the electrons. So it's reducing it. It's trying to get some sort of parity. So the greater the shielding effect, the lower the energy required um, to remove it, and that's to lower the ionization energy. Uh, and then the final point I wanted to make here, um, the final thing that I really, I've really been speaking about in these last few episodes is um, that there's, a, uh, there's generally two techniques to calculate, uh, to measure, rather, the ionization energy of atoms. Obviously, I've just come out with the figures, but the way that it would have been actually done um, is the uh, is calculate the energy of the radian causing particular lines in the emission spectrum. And this, I think, I think it might be per spectroscopy you think it probably is uh, of the element, uh, particular lines. The second is to use electron bombardment, gaseous elements, and discharge tubes. Okay, discharge tubes. Hmm. I can't really think of much there. Vacuum tubes. That's what I can really think of at the moment. Um, okay, so the data can then be interpreted in terms of atomic number of elements and the simple electronic configuration that's how we do it. so once we measured it then we can start to look at this other you know the uh, all the atomic number stuff um number of electrons in the outer shell and of course things to do with orbitals and that's that's all coming up very soon actually the orbital stuff all right so yeah until next time thanks for watching